Hi everyone, it's Irit, and if I sound very happy, it's because I am. The post guy just rang the door and brought me my hip kits, the August and September hip kits. Uh, so this is like really great timing. Um, my weekend is kind of busy, but I should have a few hours tomorrow. Uh, that's Saturday. Um, I'm recording this on Friday. Uh, I should have a few hours. a uh, couple of hours to play so yay <laughs> anyway um, today I'm doing something kind of different um, what happened was the July uh, kit hip kit came with this cut apart sheet from October afternoon I want to say I'm pretty sure and um, it has like these uh, three by three pieces Um, like images cards and I really liked the style of these cards I really liked the um, the fonts and the little cameras and all the the graphics of it um, but I wasn't feeling the colors um, that's kind of my issue with uh, many of the things in October afternoon I really like their style but it's just not the type of products that I like to scrapbook with But I wanted to take advantage of all these cool images. So I decided to try something different. And the result is also a page that is quite different from my usual style. Um, but I really like it. And this is probably something that um, I will do again. The thing is, when I have like papers that I really, really um, like, I don't feel the need to change them. So... <laughs> But the thing with um, kits is that you know it's it's I love kits and it's becoming kind of the like the only way that I get um, like paper and embellishments because I don't know post is becoming like more and more expensive and um, kit clubs is for me the most affordable way to get new stuff every month and it also has a good balance. Uh, for me personally a good balance of uh, products so for example when I do my own shopping I will tend to buy um, more paper and less embellishments um, because um, yeah because paper is cheaper and also I have a weakness for paper so what comes out is that I just usually have like well now I have Too much of everything <laughs> but um, but yeah the the point is that I think like a kit has always a good ratio of paper and embellishments so but um, now that was my point um, you know at least for me I the kit clubs I'm subscribed to I always like almost all of the things in the kit but there are always certain products that I Are less appealing to me and um, and I do enjoy finding ways of making them work for me so I thought this was a really fun way to do that and um, that was a long introduction <laughs> kind of um, so what I did I used a palette knife to put a thin layer of gesso on these cards I cut them all up and I um, A thin layer so I could still see um, the letters and words and also a hint of the color um, and as you can see I put a still photo um, before no I will there will be like a photo um, after this part of the video where I took um, these are micron pens And they come I bought like one package of black pens in different um, like tip sizes uh, so I just took a few um, a few of these pens in different sizes and uh, mostly I think I used the the thinnest one which is 0.005 I think and I traced the letters and the cameras and whatever was on the the um, On the image on the paper and it looks really cool it looks like kind of you know like I painted it or something 
and after I did the trace, like after I um, went over everything with a black pen, I took a photo and you will see that how it all looked because I didn't um, film the whole process. Um, this is not a fast <laughs> way to do a layout. Uh, this was the most time consuming part was uh, going over the letters and the images. Um, it didn't take that long, but you know, it's still kind of, um, it's not just like splattering paint or something. It's something you have to um, focus on it a little bit, but it's quite therapeutic to me at least. And then I chose a few uh, watercolors and for this I went with my Peerless watercolors um, because they are very bright and transparent and I don't need a lot of water. And even though I put gesso, it's still like relatively thin pattern paper. I mean, the October afternoon paper is not thin, but when I use watercolors, I usually use um, like mixed media paper or watercolor paper. So this is thinner than I'm used to. And I just, um, the gesso protects the paper, so, um, but I didn't want to have to use a lot of water. And for that, the Peerless watercolors are really great. So I just chose a few shades and I pretty much kept um, with the colors I kind of kept it the way the um, the original colors were so if it was like blue or turquoise I used blue or turquoise watercolor if it was red I think here I used pink but I stayed in the same area so um, so it kind of it, it it looks better because if I tried to change the color it wouldn't have worked so well because the watercolors are transparent they're not opaque you could of course do this with um, like acrylic colors and with acrylic colors um, you can also get uh, colors that are more transparent and then if you add water like a little bit of water uh, you will still see the images um, so you can try and use whatever you have you can also use of course opaque paint but then it gets a bit complicated with all the words um, because if you put first the paint, you will lose the shape of the word, and um, and after you write with a black pen, it's kind of hard to go around these very small lines and details um, with opaque paint. So that's why I went with wa watercolor, which is that I could just uh, put it on top, and um, you could still see all the images. And yeah, and then I did kind of um, experimenting on which background paper I should use and I considered um, a couple of options but I decided to go with gray cardstock that came with a cardstock add-on. I really felt that it worked well with this look of I, I don't even know how it's called I think I saw like a book that is called something like urban painting or watercolors or whatever but um, yeah you can just see like this type of graphic and uh, painting and I just thought the gray worked well with it. I actually wanted to tell a little bit about the photos that I used but um, I see I'm kind of running out of time. Um, maybe I'll tell it in a, a different video. Um, yeah these are three not very good photos that I took uh, in a very cute restaurant in Avignon and um, we I I really admire and feel very lucky <laughs> that my daughter is uh, more adventurous than I was or my husband was as we were kids we were horrible very picky eaters and um, she is really willing to try um, yeah pretty much everything unless it looks very strange um, so the whole menu was French and the waitress was very nice but she didn't you know sometimes you have these waitresses that really give you confidence and recommend things and she was kind of like translating and that was the extent of it uh, but we ordered a couple of dishes and one was I think with beef and some sauce and the other one was with um, cookie Saint-Jacques I think they are called it's like clams or oysters or the type of seafood and yeah everything was really good and my daughter also ate everything even though it didn't look like the food she's used to eating and we just had a lovely evening and I 
wrote, I added my journaling around the page. And I took a look at all the lovely embellishments um, that I had left uh, from the kit and I decided to not to add anything. Uh, I kept it really simple so something very different for me um, but yeah it was really fun to make so I hope you enjoyed the video and here are a few still shots and have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye!